Good morning. Welcome to Trinity Episcopal Parish's class over how to use the Book of Common Prayer. In our overview last time, we talked about the table of contents and the overview of how we are going to treat this particular course. Specifically, though, there are certain sections we'll spend more time on and certain sections we'll spend less time on. But one of the most important concepts in the Book of Common Prayer is the concept of time. Time in our worship is not simply about the time we spend in worship, but how we conceive of the calendar, how we conceive of how the weekly, monthly, yearly observances of our faith function. And so it's appropriate that the very first thing you have in the Book of Common Prayer is a calendar. And in the Book of Common Prayer in 1979, you have a calendar that shows you certain things about how all of our year is put together. However, before we even get to our calendar observances, we need to get something clear. There are orders of importance as to how our calendar observances work. Just like there are different things throughout the year that are more important than others, so also within the calendar of the church, there are certain occasions that um, necessarily have more solemnity, more celebratory atmosphere, and a more particularly important place within our observance of the year. Those are made very clear and explicit in the way that the Book of Common Prayer understands the function of which days, which seasons, which things have particular importance for us in our various realms. So we're going to be talking specifically about how the Episcopal Church understands the importance of marking the time. And so the calendar of the church here, on this little page right here, on page 15, the church year, it says in the first paragraph, consists of two cycles of feasts and holy days. One is dependent upon the movable date of Sunday of the Resurrection, or Easter Day. The other is a fixed date on December 25th, the Feast of the Lord's Nativity, or Christmas. So there are two main cycles in the church calendar, Christmas and Easter. And the sequence of all Sundays of the church depends on the date of Easter. So the way that we mark our time is centrally located around the celebration of the resurrection. The particular importance of this is actually very traditional. This is the way that the church has always marked her time in the calendar, especially as far back as the very early church and codified in the Council of Nicaea in 325. Now, what does that mean for our observance? It means that different days have different observances in varying degrees of solemnity. But the number one most important feasts, as we call them, are seven of them that are marked on particular traditional days to be marked and held throughout the church year. And those are Easter Day, the Feast of the Ascension, the day of Pentecost, Trinity Sunday, All Saints Day, which is always on November the 1st, Christmas Day, always on December 25th, and the Feast of the Epiphany, which is always two weeks after the Feast of Christmas, which lands on January the 6th every year. These principal feasts, no matter what else in the calendar is scheduled that day, take precedence. So in other words, if the Feast of the Epiphany lands on a Sunday, instead of the normal Sunday readings we would have, the Feast of the Epiphany's readings and its observance would take precedence over what we do on Sundays. That's the reason why these are an order of importance. Principal feasts are always observed. They are the most important feasts that we celebrate every year. But there's also a second one, and it's Sundays. You can see this on page 16. 
Sundays are the, uh, of the year are the feasts of our Lord Jesus Christ. In addition to these dates listed above, only the following feasts appointed on fixed days take precedence on a Sunday, the Holy Name, the Presentation, and the Transfiguration. So in other words, Sundays are really important for us. There are only certain days that will displace a Sunday. Um, and the reason why this is important is because the way that we mark our time is in varying degrees of solemnity, varying degrees of celebration. And that's okay. We have times and seasons in our year, in our secular life. And it's natural for us in our humanity to have those ebbs and flows and to have those particular markings of the year. Number three is holy days. The holy days are a particular kind of day that are traditionally important within the church. Those are the feasts of evangelists, the feasts of, uh, of martyrs, um, certain feasts of the Virgin Mary. They also have certain feasts that are associated with um, some of our secular round of the calendar, such as Independence Day and Thanksgiving Day. There are also days of important fasts, which include Ash Wednesday and Good Friday. Place things where we deny ourselves in a particular kind of way. We fast from certain things for those days particularly and for seasons appropriately. There are also days of special devotion. Number four, days that are asked for you to do something specific. So Ash Wednesday and the other Wednesdays and the other weekdays of Lent of Holy Week, uh, including um, these particular places on, on uh, page number 17. These are the places where particular observance is recommended. Good Friday and all other Fridays of the year in commemoration of the Lord's crucifixion, except for Fridays on Christmas and Easter, are days in which particular focus on repentance. In fact, if you tune in for our morning and evening prayers on Fridays, we will actually have some of our prayers which are specifically about the Holy Cross of Jesus and the sacrifice for our sins, and the particular repentance and amendment of life that come importantly on Fridays. Number five are days of special observance. And these are things that are included in the big calendar. These are um, what we would say minor commemorations of important saints of the church, important people who have been foundationally important for the passing on of the faith, and other things such as that. But those are your five areas, and you can find these in the calendar section from page 15 through page 18. Now, on the calendar itself in here, this calendar was the calendar that was passed in 1979. The church has updates to the calendar every once in a while that is approved in the Episcopal Church by our general convention. The easiest way to find your calendar uh, observant days is actually to get one of these handy dandy little churchman's ordo calendars or the church calendar of the year according to the use of the Episcopal Church. These are pennies on the dollar. You can get them from Amazon. If you have Amazon Prime, you can get them in a couple days. But the reason why these are very helpful is because these lay out for you by our editors in the Episcopal Church. They lay out for you where all of your particular observances and your feast days fall within the calendar year. The rest of this video will talk about how to read your calendar. So um, if you have your Book of Common Prayer, that's great, but we're going to focus on this right here. The first thing to note is that when you look at your calendar, the thing that you might see is you will see certain things that will be in bold lettering. Your bold lettering, and especially the bold and capital lettering that you see, are going to be your principal feast days. The feast days that are most important, that are, that are meant to be commemorated. For example, in January, you probably heard me say a couple of these feasts earlier, but the Feast of the Holy Name of Jesus is always on the first of the new year, January the 1st, right here. 
It's in bold and capital lettering because this is a very important day to commemorate. But also, as I mentioned, the Feast of the Epiphany, right here. Bold lettering, really important feast day to commemorate. But if you'll look at Sundays on this side, you'll see Sundays are bold lettered, but are not capitalized. The bold lettered and not capitalized are marking major feast days, principal, or excuse me, Sunday's feast days, not principal feast days. It is of another order of importance than the major, major ones that you always commemorate. The other thing that you'll see about this calendar, though, is that you'll see different colors for the day. You'll see green, white, red, purple. Sometimes you'll see uh, different colors like pink show up. And guess what? The nice thing about these calendars is on the back side of the calendars, they have an explanation for all of the liturgical colors we use and what the importance of these colors are. Here's a little bit of a short guide as to how you can tell what kind of day we're celebrating. And this is according simply to the back of this little calendar right here. You'll see certain days that are white. White days are particular commemorations that involve feasts of our Lord, Jesus Christ, particular commemorations of the resurrection, or particular seasons that involve the mystery of Christ, such as Easter season and Christmas season. That's why this is all white right here, because we're still in Christmas season in the beginning of January. You'll also see red sometimes. Red is the color that we use to commemorate either particular martyrs, so red for blood, particularly the blood of Christ, but also the blood of the martyrs. But red can also signify Pentecost, the fire of Pentecost. And these particular red days often have to do with martyrs, evangelists, those who gave their lives for the purposes of the spreading of the gospel. The other parts of the red celebrations include ordination services. Those aren't going to be necessarily in the calendar, but you'll often see red used for ordination services because of the Feast of Pentecost and the passing on of the Holy Spirit unto the apostles. You'll also see green. So, the, so Epiphany is primarily green. So let me flip over to see if I can find some more of the Epiphany season. There we go. So you'll see that there's green here. Green can be a signifier of many things, but the simplest idea you can get in at least your mind is green is for growth. Green is for the colors of the leaves. When you have a growing shoot of a sapling or of a garden, the idea of growing in your life in Christ. Then you'll see that we have violet, purple, and sometimes black. The violet color is used for the royalty of Christ, but also for repentance. Repentance of our sins. And purple, starting right here, you who are in the Episcopal Church might recognize that it starts on Ash Wednesday. Because Ash Wednesday, which this year falls in the middle of February, is the beginning of the great penitential season of Lent, in which we have a particular focus on our sinfulness and our need for God. Certain days, such as Ash Wednesday itself, Good Friday, and other commemorations that are a particular uh, solemnity in repentance, sometimes will wear black. Black is not merely needing to uh, is not merely meaning to mention the darkness of the day. It also has, as many of these liturgical colors, several meanings. Black meaning that we are in the midst of a mystery. Black is often used for, of course, the recognition of our sins. However, black also is used for what we call requiem masses, requiems that are commemorations of the dead. Black, in that case, is more appropriately meant to signify the mystery of death and the mystery of the resurrection in Christ, of which Christ has conquered death ultimately for those who are baptized into his body. 
And so the thing is about the color black is that it's not meant to make you feel bad. It's meant to make you aware of this divine darkness of God of which we approach, this unable to see clearly, such as when Moses entered the darkness of God on Mount Sinai to receive the law and to speak with God face to face. So we also, as the Apostle Paul would say, see through a glass darkly, but hopefully very soon face to face. Black is meant to bring about the mystery of Christ and the mystery of one's death in the hope of the resurrection. There are also, if you look right here, sometimes pink days. We sometimes call them rose color, but these days are particularly about a break in the midst of a penitential season to mark a joyful occasion. The, the places where you will see um, the rose-colored vestments come out are normally the fourth Sunday in Lent, sometimes called Letere Sunday, and the third Sunday in Advent, sometimes called Gaudate Sunday. These particular Sundays are markings within the calendar of a little bit of a, of a, a, a appeasal of some of our penitential focus. Instead, it is a breaking in of joy in the midst of penitential seasons. And this is especially important for Letere Sunday because it is only a couple of weeks prior to when we have the great celebration of Holy Week and the great celebration of Easter. But those are the liturgical colors that you will see from time to time. But the importance of the marking of the calendar is going to be consequentially important for how we talk about the rest of our prayer rounds. Next time, when we talk about daily prayer, daily prayer is within the context of these kinds of observances. The calendar undergirds the way in which we live and mark our time in prayer, whether it be in the daily offices of evening prayer, noonday, morning prayer, or of Compline in the later night, or if we are celebrating the Holy Eucharist on whatever day we end up celebrating it. But all that to say, friends, is that your calendar is one of the most important things to keep in mind as we continue throughout the year in our, de in our various celebrations. And again, these calendars right here are really, really helpful. If you are within uh, the, uh, if you are in Circe, um, you can feel free to call our offices and to pick up a calendar. We have a bunch of them in stock, um, and we would be happy to get one of these for you so that you can mark the time of your celebrations well. And the other thing, if you are not a part of the Episcopal Church, or if you have found, uh, if, you, if you have found us from, a, uh, from a, a different place, please note that almost all Episcopal churches will have calendars like this that they will have access to that you can ob obtain. Um, simply look up your local Episcopal church within your city limits, and you can, uh, I, I would highly expect that you would be able to call their offices in order to at least find out how to get these, or, like I said, if you have Amazon or Amazon Prime, you can find these readily available from church publishing on the Amazon uh, fulfillment services that you can get in a mere manner of days. But all that to say, friends, in the Episcopal Church, we mark our time and seasons by various ways and various solemnities, bigger and lesser celebrations, bigger and lesser fasts, and focus on our repentance. And we don't say that that is something that is unnatural. We actually say that that is actually very much the way that we as humans experience time. We have times and seasons that we go through different things. Likewise, the mystery of our faith in Christianity is too big to get all at once. And so we have a pattern of the year that allows us to more deeply experience within our own bodies the mysteries and the observances that mark our faith as being so central 
to our practice and our love of God and neighbor. Thank you so much for joining us this morning for our next installment. Next time, we will talk about personal prayer, talk about the daily office, and we'll take several weeks to talk about approaches to the daily office in which uh, we will be taking a, uh, an approach of training wheels next week in that whenever you start a new prayer practice that you've never tried before, always start small. Start small and build slowly. We will do that as we talk about the personal devotions next week. Until then, friends, be safe and may God bless you.